It is time for today's face-off as President Obama today jumped right back into domestic politics after a whirlwind trip overseas. At the top of the agenda, kick-starting the economic $787 billion stimulus plan with an effort to create or save over half a million jobs this summer. We're still in the middle of a very deep recession uh, that was years in the making and that's going to take uh, a considerable amount of time for us to pull out of. The key is for us to build on uh, the modest progress that has been made in uh, the months to come. Here to face off on the stimulus, health care reform, and what the president said while he was in Paris are Keith Boykin, Democratic strategist who served in the White House as a special assistant to President Bill Clinton, and Susan Molinari, a Republican strategist and former U.S. Congresswoman from New York. Great to see you both. You. Keith, I want to start with you. As far as the White House effort today to take some credit for the things that are going well in the economy, is that really fair given that... 6% of the stimulus, so less than $44 billion out of the uh, $787 billion, has actually made it into the economy. How would that have any impact? Well, obviously, it's had some impact, David. I think we can acknowledge that. If you spend $44 billion, it's going to have some sort of positive impact in creating some sort of jobs. Whether the 150000 number that the administration is counting, whether that, um, that actual, actual figure is correct, that's a subject that can be debated by economists and pol political pundits for days to come. But the reality is the money is starting to, to work its way through. There's still a lot more money to come through. And I think the, the impact will be positive once, we, once we're through with it all. And Susan, even if it's only one of psychological, that it gives the markets, it gives consumers confidence, doesn't that then suggest that what's happened so far is a success? Well, I guess it would suggest that it's not a failure. I guess what I'd like to say, though, is, you know, we're now looking at numbers. The administration said, um, you know, a few months back that unemployment was going to top off in September probably at 8 percent. We're now at 9.4 percent. The administration said 124 days ago we were in the midst of an economic catastrophe and signed a stimulus bill 111 days ago, and yet today we decide we're going to ramp up. So I guess the question is, why didn't we ramp up from the beginning, and why did we wait? <laughs> Um, for this economic, you know, maelstrom to continue. Well, the, the numbers that the administration was ori originally predicting, uh, the, the, the high point of the, uh, the unemployment numbers for this quarter, that was based on a different economic scenario. Now the, the figures that we've seen, we've seen have shown that the, that the crisis yeah. has grown, but it's actually been growing before we realized. The recession began in December 2007. Throughout the entire 2008 campaign until September when we started to see the big investment banks collapse, nobody really knew we were in a recession. There were still a lot of people debating that fact. And so I think what the administration is trying to do is they're trying to deal with the present reality, move forward. Remember where we were in, in 1982 and 83 when the Reagan administration, when unemployment hit 10.8 percent. And, and I, I don't think we want to get to that point, but we have to have aggressive efforts to prevent that. No, no, no. Fair enough. I think what just concerns some people is that there's so many things on the table right now, health care, climate change, economic stimulus, all these things that the president's trying to do, you know, sometimes while he's overseas that, you know, maybe we should have ramped up a little bit, you know, earlier than waiting till, you know, we continue to see these jobless numbers go down. I'm not an economic forecaster, and I could tell that the economy wasn't getting that much better. Well, yeah, I, I understand with you. I understand what you're saying. Yes, we may, maybe could have done it before, but the reality is it's here right now. Why not take advantage of the opportunity? We do need health care reform. We do need economic reform. We do need to do something about the climate change and about, and about the, uh, the issue with, with, with trying to preserve our environment. So I, I think there's a lot that the administration has on its table, but they have on the, on the table because there are a lot of challenges they face. The, the, the the previous administration basically left a lot for them to deal with, and they're trying to clean up the mess, if you will. Wow, well, you know, I don't know what the Democrats are going to do when, like, President Obama's in for a full year and they can't keep referring back to all these inherited messes. He is president of the United States now. He's been president. And, uh, you know, his timing in terms of ramping up, I think, deserves to be questioned. I'll he agree with you on that, um, Susan. I think that you're right. A year from now, we can't say that B the Bush administration was responsible for everything. But look, it's only been four or five months that this administration has been in office. You're talking about eight years of economic policies, including tax cuts and wars and, and all sorts of other problems that, were, that, were, that were ignored. Terrorist strikes, that, you know, taking uh, yeah. 3,000 people down that created the Department of Homeland Security. Yes, a lot of challenges. I, I understand yeah. that. So I'm saying you can't resolve that in a few months' time over after eight years it took to create those issues. Well, we got to move to the topic, too, Keith and Susan. I want to ask you, of course, it's health care. You alluded to it, Susan. This is the other big thing here. And Keith, the president, uh, according to the front page of the New York Times, he's taking the bull by the horns, feeling the need to get in front of this with the weekly address. The top 
time is now, but we're still not hearing concrete answers about this $1 trillion that will be needed to reform health care. And now the president also backing possibly a public option in this. Yeah, that's a question for me. Yes, Keith. Well, yeah, I actually think that the president is uh, making the right decision by supporting the public option. I don't think he's insisting on it, as, as I think some in the Republican uh, Senate caucus are, are suggesting that he is. I actually think it's important to have that public option. Uh, the, the fear, apparently, from the Republican side is that the public insurance program, which they're so sure is so bad, it's going to actually be so good that the people are going to actually choose that over the private insurance. I always thought the Republicans believed in competition, but apparently when we talk about health care, Republicans don't believe Susan, in competition. Susan, is that the case? Well, no, I, I think with the Republicans are concerned about is this sort of out of control spending that's all taking place and you know you correctly noted we don't know how we're going to pay for this although I think I read that there's one more time we're going to tax the rich which seems to be the answer for how we're going to pay for everything under this administration and it's not just the Republicans the blue dogs in the house came out today and said they're vehemently against this proposal so it's not just Republicans that the president's going to have to get out ahead of he's got to start to talk to some of the more conservative members of his caucus in the house and the senate but there is no proposal on the table yet it's right now they're still working out what that proposal will be. You've That's got the true. Finance Committee and, and Senator Kennedy's committee doing two different things. They've got to well, reconcile whatever it is they come up with, and then Susan, the president's going to get The, right. the only detail we know so is, far is tax the rich. That's all Susan, we know. Here's, oh, here's the key political question I have for you in this. Do you believe if a poll was taken today that more Americans would trust private insurance companies as far as to not mess up their health care, or would they trust the government? Which one? Well, you know what? I think American people are getting a little concerned by how much the government is running in the United States today. So um, while they may not be totally happy with their private health care, I think they're going to be really scared when they see <laughs> Susan, how I think that's the statement you, of the week. What? what? <laughs> but you, you Susan, basically made my dearly, point. But to say that Americans are not entirely happy with their private insurance companies, I think that's uh, the understatement opposed, of the week. As opposed is. to the government running it, let's see how well, efficiently we've run that's all the our other line. programs. But I think you made my point, Susan. If, if you think that the, the public won't choose a government option, then why are you so concerned about about having a government you option. Know what, I, I think the reality is the government actually is a big player in the health care system right now. They provide Medicare and Medicaid. They provide VA benefits. Right. The government well, is so the one that is actually... Let's get Susan the last word. And, Susan, the last word and doing a fabulous job of controlling costs on all those programs. You just made my point. No, but they do, though. They do compare <laughs> okay. to private insurers, Susan actually. Susan Molinari, Republican strategist, Keith Boykin, Democratic strategist. I think Susan's just glad that we didn't put her on with Tom Tancredo today. <laughs> Susan, <laughs> a pleasure as always. Keith, thank you as well. Good to Thanks, see you both. Guys. Thank you. Okay.